Hi everybody and welcome to our next NUSTEM COP26 encounter. Today we're going to meet Dr. Yao Lu, who is a plant ecosystems ecologist. Um, I'll, I'll pass over to her now. Yao, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, thanks for the invitation, Joe. Um, so, yeah, my name is Yao Liu and I'm a senior lecturer at Northumbria. Um, and I would define myself as a plant and ecosystem ecologist. So I study how plants and more broadly the entire ecosystem and that meaning um, in a certain geographical area, for example, a forest, um, not just the trees, but as well, uh, but also all the other living uh, organisms, including those uh, living in the soil. So how they work and their different environmental conditions. And uh, by that, I mean like different, uh, for example, different temperature, different precipitation. Um, so I study so, so I conduct field work and as well as lab work, and you can see me in the picture um, taking a soil core sample from an aspen forest in uh, Colorado, I think. Um, and uh, so, so I do conduct some field work, but most of my research uh, is using uh, statistical as well as mathematical um, tools to understand the global pattern um, of how plant and ecosystem work. So, so my research together with um, research of a lot of other ecologists really aims to answer the question that how now our um, uh, ecosystem, for example, woodlands or grassland or um, wetlands are going to respond to future climate change and how that response might feed back to climate change itself. So with those knowledge, we can better um, manage and conserve our ecosystem in order to mitigate and to adapt to uh, to the impacts of climate change. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Yao. So you were talking there about computer models. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what you mean by a computer model in this in this context? Right. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. So, so. I guess I would like to start with the reason why we use computer model to simulate um, ecosystem because there are many players in a ecosystem. So you have different trees, different organisms in the soil, as well as different, um, a lot of different processes. So um, the trees are photosynthesizing as well as giving, uh, giving out um, carbon dioxide. So. Um, so a computer model really is a representation of all these different entities and processes. Um, and what it does, for example, is to, um, to help us put together in our knowledge, to codify in our knowledge of how uh, all the different entities in the ecosystem respond to certain environmental conditions. So for example, given a certain amount of sunshine and precipitation, how much carbon is it taking in and how much carbon is it giving out? Thank you, Yao. So um, we're asking all of our climate experts to tell us something that they've found out about the environment through their research. So could you tell us something that you found out, please? Sure. Um, so yeah, so the example I'm going to give you is about ecosystem transformations. And uh, the picture there kind of give you a, a example of how that could look like. So it's uh, it's a woodland in the America. It's near. Um, it's called Los Alamos in New Mexico. And what happened there is a, a pinyon pine and juniper co-dominated ecosystem on the left hand side. Um, and during 2002, um, got really uh, hit hard by a a, a very strong drop. And uh, what happened between 2002 and 2003, as shown in the picture there, is all the pinion pine, which are less water, uh, less drought resistant, died uh, during that course. And uh, you can see in the picture of 2003, um, there's only juniper trees left. So there you have a, a major change in the dominant species of the ecosystem. So that's what we call ecosystem transformations. 
So, so we really ask a very simple question of how long the ecosystem we're seeing today has been there, have been there. So what we found out um, at different time scales are, so looking at into the past, we found out that very few ecosystems have persisted longer than 20,000 years into the past, which is the last glacial maximum. Um, and that means with the same amount of warming in the future, um, uh, most of the global ecosystem are under threat. And we also found out most ecosystems that we see in our days aren't that old. Um, and that poses a very interesting question of when we restore or conserve a forest, what's the baseline that we're trying to conserve or restore it to if most of them are that old? And finally, looking into the future, we found that this type of ecosystem transformation, so like major disruption of what's the major species in the ecosystem, are, are um, happening as, at a accelerated rate and happening across the world. So that uh, brings up the urgency of um, considering this reality in our management and conservation effort, um, knowing a lot of what we're seeing today may or may not be suitable under future climate change. Brilliant, thank you very much, Yao. Um, so I think that's really interesting that we can, um, when we're thinking about conserving a forest, the, the question is when? Do we conserve what the forest looks like today or do we want to make it look like it looked five years ago or 10 years ago? Because that uh, your example of the American forest there, well, if you conserved what it looked like today, you wouldn't have any of those pinion trees. But if you did it uh, 20 years ago, you would still have them in there as well. So I think that's quite interesting. We're asking all of our scientists to ask us a big question, something we can discuss and get our teeth into. Um, so based upon your research on uh, plant ecosystems, could you tell us what, what question would you like us to think about in the class today? Right, um, so I think my question kind of follows naturally from what I just introduced, the ecosystem transformations. So um, think of a ecosystem that you care about, be that a local uh, woodland or forest. Um, and as we discussed, there's multiple versions of it when you think about protecting that forest or woodland. Um, there's the present state. And there's a historical state, for example, 50 years ago, how this woodland looked like. And there's also the future. So with future warming and changing of climate patterns, um, what's suitable to grow there may or may not be suitable anymore. So which one, how, how would you uh, choose to protect this forest? Um, the current state, the historical state, or the future state. So um, think about that, and uh, um, there's no right or wrong answer, and I think it would depends on the context. So yeah, hope you enjoy discussing it. Well, so thank you, Dr. Yao, for talking to us today. It's been really interesting to hear about your research on ecosystems, how those ecosystems change really rapidly, and what they might look like in the future. And thank you for leaving us with that big question. Thank you for the opportunity, Joe. See you all later. Thank you, Yao, for taking the time to talk to us this morning. It was really interesting to hear about your work. And thank you for leaving us with that big question. We'll be back later in the week with more COP26 encounters. So we look forward to seeing your class soon.